Hello everyone, I'm Alex Povey and today I'm recording a podcast style thing on YouTube, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I didn't want to go down the route of making uh, podcasts because then you have to set up a whole different identity and create just podcasts. So I thought with the YouTube channel, I can share podcasts with you uh, in this way, if you if you like the podcast format, please leave me a comment. If you'd like a video instead, you know, please just comment below. Let us know what you think. But I'm here recording this podcast really today because of the success I have had over the last three years. I have uh, been going out to all these community groups and things and bits and bobs and, you know, spreading the oatcake gospel. And that's really what I want to do with you today. So I thought, if I make a podcast, you, know, you could listen to it in the bath, you could listen to it in the car, uh, do what you want with it, really. Um, I know you might just listen to the first couple of minutes. Great. If you listen to the whole thing, you know you could pause it, uh, flip back to it in a few days or whatever when you really want to listen to it, you know, in depth. Um, so, as I, as I was just saying, I did a lot of community groups, so it all started with, like, WI. They phoned me up, Alex, do you talk about oatcakes? Well, I can talk the talk, and I'm sure I can walk the walk. So, um, the first one was do, uh, the Women's Institute in Mere Heath. I uh, went along to them about three years ago, and from there, it's just gone from, like, strength to strength. Um, yeah, I've been to primary schools, middle schools, high schools... Uh, colleges, universities, um, like retirement villages, community groups. Um, oh, blimey! You know, people. You know, I'll just go out and I'll, you know, I'll just talk about oatcakes. I like to start off with history, then I tell them a bit about me and what I do with oatcakes and the history of the company. So that's why I want to make this podcast. So really, I can just play the podcast and not actually be at these. Uh, <laughs> Be at, uh, <laughs> be like, be there. You know, I could just be like, you know, just go along with a tape recorder, like the old days, press play, and you know, everybody in the room just listens to what I've got to say. So, I, you know, I won't won't go too much into history today. Uh, if this podcast does all right, I might make some more podcasts. If everyone wants video, I'll do video. It's up to you, but I know it's. If you're driving along in the car, maybe it's hard to watch a video and I'm trying to explain something, so maybe a podcast, you know, you just press play in the car and you drive along. Could be about an hour long, so, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll give it a go. This is podcast number one. So, in 1994, Povey's Oak Geeks was founded by my dad, uh, Steve Povey, and he rescued some machinery and equipment from uh, a proprietor in Biddulph who made oat cakes before. Uh, he'd brought this machinery in 1980, the, the guy did. Uh, I think he went bankrupt or something. It was stowed in a garage in Biddulph and my dad saw this machinery for sale and he, he took a gamble and uh, yeah, started his own oat cake shop. I remember he come home and uh, he was sort of discussing it and. He was telling me and my sister, right, what do you want us to do, what shall we do? I was like, chip shop. So I could be making a podcast today about a chip shop, but I'm not. I'm telling you about Povey's Oatcakes and where it all come from and how it all started and how we got to where we are today. And um, so we rescued this machinery and the Oatcake Shop, that's what it was called, the Oatcake Shop was founded. So it wasn't until about two years later that the oatcake shop became Povey's Oatcakes. Now, the people in Biddulph started calling it Povey's. So we're going down Povey's, you're going get a Povey's, and um, Povey's Oatcakes was born. So it wasn't us that named the company. It was the lovely people of Biddulph who like, adopted us like a second child. And uh, from there, um, uh, John Street, um, you know, I'll give him a mention, sadly he did pass away a few years ago. Uh, he used to work at the, the other oatcake shop before, so it was him that sort of gave my dad a helping hand. Uh, 
Tony Oakton as well, uh, one of my dad's friends, who's a jack of all trades, uh, handy with a saw and a hammer and nail. He helped build the first shop and, um, you know, it got, got us started. And um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you have an opening as you do, you get started and, uh, you know. So, so that was 1994. So four years later, 1998, then my dad took another step to another shop. It's just 33 High Street is where we are today on Biddulph High Street. And what we, we had a bigger shop, so we had more room for manoeuvre. And in the end, we actually brought the shop. So the shop became a, uh, an asset to us. As, as a company, you know, you have to keep paying rent and things like that, so it does give you, you know, it does help you, help you out along the way. And, yeah, we were supplying small shops. We've got your butchers, your post office, um, spa shops, bargain boozies, um, you know, all, all sorts of shops like that. You know, you're doing great. You know, we had, literally had, like, two vans on the go, one doing Stoke side, one doing South Cheshire side. And um, it wasn't until about 2002 and Aldi uh, wanted oat cakes, so they come to us and we started supplying Aldi. At the time, you know, we, Aldi only had like nine shops, nine stores in this area. Now, 2019, they have 20. So just in this small area, that's just how they've grown in this small area, let alone over the country, uh, they're doing the same thing. So we just stick to, you know, the region of, uh, like, you know, the, around Stoke-on-Trent, uh, Staffordshire and Cheshire and Derbyshire. So that's, 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 the, that's the main area for oatcakes, uh, or Purvis oatcakes, or oatcakes, or Staffordshire oatcakes in general. So, uh, yeah, we've grown with them from strength to strength. 2005, uh, Wait Rose come on. The only one really at that time was uh, the one in Sandbach. This is South Cheshire. Does very well. Does very well. And, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we grew it. The, the, the business grew. And we were doing night shifts. We were in this shop doing night shifts. And... Um, uh, 2008, uh, my mum passed away. Uh, she got killed by a horse. A uh, horse landed on top of her, killed her. And, uh, you know, very sad time. Uh, it, that was in, like, February 2008. So in April 2008, uh, my dad suffered a, a big heart attack as well. He had to have a triple heart bypass. And he couldn't come to work. Now, I was just at that time... Um, I was just finishing uh, my college. I did three years at college doing catering and hospitality, you know, keeping my hand in, in the, the food industry trade the best I could. And, um, yeah, so my dad had this heart attack. He had to have a triple heart bypass. He couldn't come to work. So I sort of stepped in. Uh, I was working as a chef as well at the White Lion in Leek. Now, back in them, in them, them days, I was, I was earning bloody good money for, for, you know, probably more than I am now because I didn't have a mortgage, I didn't have bills to pay. I was literally getting all this money. I was like, yeah, it's great, you know, running, running two jobs. But I had to sort of sacrifice that job. I do miss it uh, still to this day. We had some good times down there. But I had to, you know, family first. Um, so my dad couldn't come to work and... The, the the sad part about it was he never actually come back to work. Um, we're in the space from 2008 to 2011. Uh, he passed away uh, from lung cancer. So he spent all them years uh, on all these tablets and whatever for his um, for his heart and uh, everyone you know the the um, you know he's sort of like getting try to get fit to come back to work. He probably turned up over over them between 2008 and 2011, probably like six or seven times. Um, so that was my apprenticeship 
as you say, to running a business. So uh, at the age of 23, when my dad passed away, I got chucked in. I got, there, there's the keys, there you go. You know, sink or swim. I was like, well, I aren't sinking. And it's one of them things where you, your mum and dad always tell you when you're younger, do something else, do something else. I'd always say to them, I'm going to do oak keys. That is me. That's what I'm going to do. And... Um, yeah, so I got the I got the keys chucked at me, 2011. Um, you know, I've got this shop. We've got like 12, 13 staff. You know, they all want more. They've all got mortgages. They all got bills to pay. So I was like, yeah, I can, I can do this. So so I did, and uh, I'm still here today. And um, so I've got this shop, and my accountant's very words to me, Leslie, not who sadly isn't here anymore. His famous words to me, uh, I sat down in his office and he said, Alex, you know, for the first 12 months, run that business as if your dad was here. Don't touch anything. Just, just run it. Get, get a year's accounts under your belt and then you can learn what everything's about and get everything settled. Because obviously when someone dies, you don't, um, you don't settle it all instantly. You know, it does take time to get things sorted so go to 2012 i redeveloped the website to make it more user friendly everybody got a login uh, and a password you know things like that we did we did do online sales before but i redeveloped it we freshened it up and um you know we've got uh, over 3,000 customers uh, on there. And it's still growing every year, uh, you know, every week even. I mean, you know, we're shipping oatcakes all across the UK now uh, by next day by DPD. Um, you know, for five, 10 packs of oatcakes for like £12. I mean, you know, you can't even get in the car and drive from Cornwall up it to, to here for cheaper than that. Next day delivery. So, you know, little things like that that we did. Now... So as we were saying before, I've got this shop, it's running like maxed out, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, near enough, it's brimming. Um, and I needed to do something here because, you know, um, not, not struggling, but like, you know, we, we needed something to take the pressure off. And um, we go to 2014, uh, basically we've got the funds uh, available and ready and I took the plunge we built our own factory uh, just up Nipersley which is the top end of Biddulf as if you go in towards Stoke-on-Trent through Burnley Ford it's just up there so we kept the shop and the shop we come back to a shop running say like 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. just normal shop hours um, so we opened this factory uh, I took a trip to France um, to get an automated like crepe machine and it didn't work. So, I mean, you're looking at, say, I think we put in about nearly 250 grand's worth of investment into this factory and it, and, and it didn't work. I had, had like mither and everything going on and it was just, oh, fucking heck. So, anyway, this machine I got the machinery, I sent it to auction. I was like, no. Yeah, at the end, end of the day, it didn't go to work. And, you know, I, 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 I speak to a solicitor, he's like, yeah, this could take three or four years to get you sorted and, you know, iron out the creases with the French company. I was like, I haven't got four years. And what happened was in 2000, and, um, in August, 2014, uh, my grandma passed away, and it left me, left me around thirty thousand pounds inheritance. Now that was like me get out of jail card. And I don't know everybody isn't that lucky, but that was like, uh, you know, this is your last chance, Alex. So what what we actually did was we so we we sent this machinery that didn't work to auction. I got about seven grand for it. So I want you just out of my way. It's taking up space and things like that. You know, I, I, I sold a few conveyor belts and bits of bobs, but 
you have to make these mistakes in life to get to where you are today, don't you? You know, you've got to live and learn. Um, so, I got me get out jail card and what I did with that was we replicated the machine that we already had in Biddulph on a bigger scale uh, to give us more output. Now, if you're opening a factory, don't expect it work the next day. Opening a factory, or even a business in fact, you, you've got to give it time. And I'd say at least a good 12 months, uh, you know, to settle in. You know, you've got staff who are used to working like this. You've got to get them to work in a different way, different processes, things like that. So it wasn't till about 2000 and, um, no, 2015, yeah, about May 2015. Then we got it up and running properly. And, um, you know, and it's never gone back since. It's always gone forward and forward and forward. Now, literally, so I got this um, replicated machine. We put that in. And I got a phone call off Iceland. Uh, they wanted oat cakes, so it started to supply in Iceland as well as that time. And literally a month later, Buka Macro uh, got in touch with me and we started supplying them as well. So really it was like a breath of fresh air that all this hard work that I've been doing over the last couple of years, uh, you know, it all fell into place. That's great. You know, uh, really a bit of a shock. And you think, like, you know, it's like, uh, that's like a, another... Uh, helping hand and so yeah you know we, we've done all right over the years a lot of hard work and it's you know it's 24 7 you know it's not like we we shut down for a week it's, it's a 24 7 bakery operation you know and yeah we've got to we've got to do these things haven't we so what happened then is I, 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 mean, I, I don't know how to quite phrase this so uh, one of our customers uh, said I was in a meeting with them and they said have you got any accreditation so I mean no one had ever asked us for accreditation so it's sort of, you're sort of scratching the head as if to say you know do we need any uh, or what do we need because you know, I'm serving the customer, the customer's got to tell me what they want. So they were like, right, we want BRC. Now, BRC is designed for big million pound companies, not the small, not smaller companies, it's something called Salsa. Um, so, okay, you know, it's, it's not a thing that's going to do us any harm. Uh, it's more for, you know, traceability, food safety, making sure that we've got our processes and controls in place. And, you know, to set this BRC up, it's like £40,000. So I had to invest uh, more money again into the business. But it's one of them things, once you've got it in place, it sort of runs itself. You know, you, we, we, well, we obviously keep it going. Um, we get audited every 12 months, unannounced. Uh, so an auditor will come in for like two days, watching what we're doing, inspecting us like. Like the food, uh, environmental health, where they come in and give you five stars. It's like that, but on steroids, if you get me. I mean, a BRC audit, you're talking over £3,000 just for an audit. That's, that's the sort of level that you're at. So we had our first audit, and we got a grade B. And, um, you know, working as well. Well, we had another audit after that every nine months, cause, and then we got an A+. Plus. Um, so you have to sort of build your way up the ranks with that and yeah we got it in place the customer was happy uh keeps the relationship there but also it it, it ensures uh other customers that come on in the future or anybody eating povis oat cakes that it is a 100 percent safe product and uh, you know you've got your diligence in there that we are doing everything um the best we can so I, you know I, I could probably go on for like hours about this but i really just want to put a bit of a podcast together um i, I could talk about more subjects and things like that i just wanted to do with it, this as like a, a, like an introduction um you know if you're listening to this let me know where you're from 
if you got to the end of the podcast and that's great hope you enjoyed my story and i'd like to share more stories with you in the future but like i said at the start of the video do you want them in video format or podcast is that okay do you want to listen to them in the car while you're driving do you need do you want them downloadable i don't know but i thought i'll put this podcast together and yeah i mean that that's just like a brief overview of my story i know we went you know i know there's a lot of things you know i could talk about and um yeah uh, i hope you like it so i'll keep going on youtube and i hope you enjoy all the rest of the videos that i've been doing and um yeah let me know what you think and well thanks for listening you've been brilliant and um hope to speak to you all soon